We have a good one today, guys. Any opportunity to talk about eyeshadow palettes, I'm in there like swimwear. So Ali Glines and Samantha March did a part two to their eyeshadow tag that was very, very popular a couple years ago. I partook, it was so fun. So they created and updated some questions and here we are, I'm doing the eyeshadow palette tag part two. I've pulled all my eyeshadows, I'm really excited. So let's get into it. If you are interested in doing this tag, go ahead and do it. Honestly, it's so fun. Tag Ali, tag Samantha. Make sure you follow them. They are both great. And let's get into it. So the first question is all-time favorite palette. Like, that is a fully loaded question. How does one pick just one palette? So I had to think, and I ultimately decided to go to a palette that I could not simply live without. If all of my eyeshadow palettes disappeared, what would be the first eyeshadow palette that I would go to? And that would have to be the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. So predictable if you guys know me. But this is like my everyday palette. Every time I wear this palette, I love the way my makeup looks. When it comes down to it, if I could only wear one color story, it would be this one right here. These are like more cooler toned neutrals. You have a little bit of warm elements in here. And I love that those warm elements are tied into here. The quality is great. The size is great. And the looks that you get are just perfection. So if I could only have one eyeshadow palette, I think it would be this one. This one would at least be the first one I would buy. Because in terms of just doing my makeup really quick in the morning, if I want to do a look that I know is going to look good, that I'm going to love, that I don't have to think about. This is the palette that I'm going to reach for. So Natasha Denona Glam Palette takes that category. Next one is a new favorite. So I looked back at the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried in the last few months and I decided to go with the Charlotte Tilbury Celestial Pearl Eyeshadow Palette. This one was one that I was not expecting to love so much, but it's one of my favorites for just popping all over the lid. So these are just four very shimmery high quality eyeshadows and it's going to give you such an ethereal easy glow to the lid it doesn't look as impressive when you swatch it but when you put it all over the lid i just love the look that it gives sometimes a nude shimmery eye is all you need to really open up and awaken the eyes i love that it's different than the normal kind of dimensional look that I usually go for. This is truly a Charlotte Tilbury type of vibe. I really, really love it. And um, not only was it one that I wasn't expecting to love so much, but it was one of my favorite looks. I wore it a ton in the last few months. So this is definitely a new, new favorite. It's been a few months now, but it's really climbed to the top. <laughs> the next category is keeping for the memories. I have a whole box of palettes that I keep for the memories. I could do a whole video on this category alone. Uh, so I did actually do a eyeshadow palette declutter in December, and I wanted to pick from that selection of palettes. So I chose my hand-selected ColourPop palette here. Oh my gosh, I did such a good job. So this was a big deal for me when I made this palette. This was in the earlier years of ColourPop. I was in college, I had no money, and I saved up on Black Friday. I ordered a ton of single shadows. As you can see, I was really into the greens and plums. Not much has changed. I have a lot of gold shades here. And so I individually picked each color for this palette. And my roommate, Becca, she sat down at the dining table with me. And we put each and every one of these colors together. Together. Mostly Becca did it. And so this just makes me think of my best friend Becca. For that reason, I will not get rid of it. These shadows are kind of old. They're not the greatest quality. I didn't use it too terribly much. I mean, I used it, but not as much as I probably should have. But nonetheless, this makes me think of Becca, college, that time in my life. So I will always, always keep this. The next category is underrated. <laughs> so um, I did not realize these were underrated. Now I think they are. So these are the BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes. I like their 16 pan palettes. 
Yes, I did see BH did file for bankruptcy. That doesn't mean they're closing yet, just so you guys know. But it means it's not looking good and sales were not good. So to me, the BH eyeshadow palettes are underrated. I know brands like Morphe and e.l.f. are beating them and that's what's making it hard for BH to survive. But honestly, you guys, a BH has better eyeshadow quality than those other brands, I'm telling you. So my personal favorite has always been Summer in Saint-Tropez. I've loved the fun colors in here. Another recent kind of springtime favorite of mine has been Lost in Los Angeles. I also have Passion in Paris, Smitten in Switzerland. I have a ton that I really, really love. But seriously, if you are looking for the highest quality eyeshadows for the most affordable price, BH Cosmetics is where you have to go, especially now that we don't really know what's going to happen with the brands. I know you can get their eyeshadow palettes for a pretty good deal at TJ Maxx right now. I'm really scared. <laughs> I hope we can keep this eyeshadow formula and BH kind of comes out on top because I absolutely love their eyeshadow formula. It really is so high quality and they're just so underrated apparently because not enough people have gotten on board with their eyeshadow palettes. You guys know I'm an eyeshadow palette snob. I don't typically like more affordable eyeshadow palettes because I swear I can tell a difference. Not with the BH. I'm just saying. <laughs> Next one, not a favorite but can't get rid of. Oh my gosh, just tag my name at the end of that sentence. Story of my life. So one that I've been trying to get rid of but I just can't is this Makeup Revolution and Rachel Leary palette. I have such a love-hate relationship with Makeup Revolution. I don't know why but typically I have not enjoyed their eyeshadows. I've had some that were decent but this one I can't get rid of simply because of how large it is and I love the bright color. This bright teal color is absolutely everything to me and I love all the color options in here. I love the colors that she chose for this. I love the face shades and not to Rachel's fault but to make a revolution's fault I don't really love the quality on this. I've tried numerous times to make this work. It doesn't work for me. The aesthetic of it everything like I need a higher quality formula in here because I love everything else. I no, everybody is into the small palette phase right now. I love them big. The bigger, the better. I love this palette aesthetically, but the quality, it's not good. And I just, I can't get rid of this. I can't. Fave collab. Okay, that one's easy. I knew immediately where to go to. Odin's Eye and the Legendary Diversa collection. So this was with three different creators. We have Judy who created the Red Dragon palette. We have Tina over at the Fancy Face who created the Hummingbird palette palette and then Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner who created the Giant Wolves palette. So all three of these palettes are some of the prettiest color stories I have ever seen. I truly feel like they went to the right creators to create these palettes because these are all color stories I've personally been asking for and not only are the color stories amazing but the quality is also just as amazing. So both parties really killed it. I've talked a ton about this collaboration because I've just been completely Florida by these palettes and these curations. Ugh, and there's multi-chromes in each of the palettes. There's so much dimension to the shimmers. The mattes are pigmented and easy to blend. My favorite, favorite, favorite collab. I've used these palettes so, so much, which is a lot for me to say because I've also tried a lot of palettes. I have a lot of palettes, but these continue to re-inspire me and the quality is just chef's kiss. 2021 favorite. You probably know this if you saw my palette rankings, but my favorite eyeshadow palette most used that was discovered in 2021 was the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. This is definitely the sister to the Glam Palette. Uh, it's just a little bit more in the mauve purpley tones, and if you know me, I also love the purpley tones. If I'm not wearing a cooler tone neutral eye look, then I'm gonna go for the mauve purple look. So Natasha Denona, again, just created the perfect palette curated to me honestly. I love this guy. I've used it a ton. I love the colors in here. I have a lot of fun with it. Retro and glam and I'm good to go. Those are the two palettes that I need to survive in life. We'll throw in a Pat McGrath in there as well but yeah. Next category is did not expect to love and oh my goodness. This palette shocked me. Shocked me, shocked me. 
So this palette is the Melt Cosmetics Brunette Palette. I actually had this for months before I actually even put it in my eyes. So backstory is Melt Cosmetics typically to me seems to have a very inconsistent eyeshadow formula. I typically don't love their formula. I picked this up for like a Sephora VIB sale. I just wanted to try it. It's a boring neutral palette, so I was never really inclined to reach for it. So it just kind of sat there. Then one day I tried it. I was shook. <laughs> And can I tell you, this is one of my most used palettes ever since I opened it. It's so boring, but the quality is solid. <sighs> I wish I wore more color, but I'm super comfortable in like the brown tones. And this fulfills that. The mattes in here are phenomenal. They are creamy. They are blendable. I love every look that I create with this palette. I think there's like one shimmer in here that's a little odd. But the rest of them are like... Ooh, so good. Like I just grab for it all the time. It's so easy to create looks with. I just did not expect to love this. I thought I was going to be bored with it and I thought potentially Melt might have flubbed up the quality on this. Not the case. Love this palette. Next category, palette that sparks joy. So for me, when I was thinking of what sparks joy, obviously when I looked at it, what was I like, ooh, but also what did I just have pure fun with? And for me, that is unfortunately not available, but it is the Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 3 palette. Now, this was a pricey palette, and I have pondered over the last few months whether or not this was actually worth it, but at the end of the day, having a curated palette of multi-chromes, I mean, ugh, nothing can bring me more joy. It's definitely uh, not my typical style of palettes, not directly in my comfort zone either, not one that I reach for all the time, but dang, this brings so much joy in me that we can have all these multi-chromes Okay, multi-chromes, there's duo-chromes, there's holographic shades. This is what excites me about makeup. Even if I don't really wear these, this is what brings me joy, makes me so happy, makes me love just sitting in my room, swatching all over my body. This is what the definition of that palette. So I've come to the conclusions. It is worth it to me. I love this palette and it brings me so much joy. Next category is the newest palette to my collection. I just got this in the mail today. I'm so excited. This is the Sydney Grace palette in Be Mine. I have mine in the light version. How fun is this packaging? So fun for Valentine's Day. And look at these tones. They are very pretty, very soft, wearable, romantic. I think this is a palette that all of you neutral lovers are going to enjoy. You have these mauve pinky tones, you have the neutral tones, and then you have these smoky tones. So definitely date night appropriate palette. I haven't even touched these, which is, let's just touch Sydney Grace. Sydney Grace does it right, always. Oh my goodness, yup. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to play with this. Look at those. Definitely a more wearable palette, but it looks so stunning. I'm gonna have to put it on my eyes very, very soon. I'm wearing like the most boring makeup look today for this video. I'm wearing some mattes from the Mini Beba palette and then a Kotos liquid shadow, which is great, but having all these eyeshadow palettes in front of me make your girl wanna play. Last question. First palette used in 2022, and the first palette that got to land on my eyes this year was the Dior Trio Bleak Trio in Coral Glow. It's quite an underwhelming palette. Uh, it's, it's okay. I didn't love it, but I did like it. It's a little softer on the eyes, a little bit overpriced, but... Uh, it's a really pretty trio for like a monochromatic look. Like I love these shades on my cheeks and my eyes to create kind of a look similar to what I'm wearing, but they would truly be monochromatic because I'd put this on my eyes and on my face. Really multifunctional in that way. Very pretty. Probably not worth the money, but I do like it, so little underwhelming choice for that category. <laughs> all right, you guys, there we have it. Those were all of the palettes that I chose for the eyeshadow palette tag part two. I will have all the categories down below for you as well as my answers for such categories. Make sure you guys do this video. It's so much fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.